What up though, y'all? It's Chris. Appreciate you connecting with me while I do my 10,000 steps today. Gotta get them steps in every day. Shout out to you guys, subscribers new and old. Thank you for joining along with me for the rise to 5,000. Man, it's cold out here today. Y'all know just the other day I was wearing a tank, right? I'm out here with a tank, enjoying that it was a very mild day and now I'm out here in layers today. But that's that's Michigan weather for us right now. So I'm going to dive into the topic, man. Megan Thee Stallion has admitted that during the Gail King interview, she lied about her relationship with Tory Lanez. I mean, nobody believed that anyway. You know, when she claimed she never had a physical relationship with him. Nobody really believed that. I think even her most, you know, staunch defenders and supporters didn't really believe that. And um, now, I mean, she just basically went ahead and just confirmed what everybody pretty much figured to be the case anyway. So I don't know if you guys remember a couple years back, I think it was like 2022, she did a, a sit down interview with Gail King and I had no interest in watching this because, you know, I don't really do female rappers because I just I can't relate to anything they're talking about. All they talking about is how, how, how wet they are, how big they booty is. I mean, I cannot relate to that. I'm sorry. Like, not to say that the stuff the dudes talk about a lot of that I can relate to because, um, you know, selling selling substances and you know, firing off firearms at ops. Uh, you know, that's not anything that I can relate to either. But uh, at least it's not of the sexual nature. Like just the female rap stuff, unless they wanted to, you know, uh, al alphabet female rappers. And I mean, I mean, some of them, they, they lean into the sexual stuff too, but nowhere near as much as a Megan Thee Stallion um, or a, what's her name, Cardi B. But uh, they did the interview and, you know, she's telling her account of things. She's being very careful about what she says. You can tell she's being very choosy with her words. She don't want to slip up and say something that she shouldn't. You know, she's she's playing up the victim card very hard. And, you know, I mean, she is the alleged victim. She was shot in the foot. Right. Um, but listen, I'm, I'm going to keep it a buck with y'all, man. I never really believed all of what was being said about this situation. All right. I, I just believe that too many elements about it weren't being told for me to really draw a conclusion one way or another. You know, there were things that point to, okay, maybe something did happen to her, but there were things to point to maybe something didn't and then there were things that pointed to maybe something happened to her but perhaps it was somebody else who did it not tori you know it was just when there's truth there's just one version of it and it's it's undeniable it's it's real it's solid there's not variables and that's just kind of how this was so i just really didn't want to give it too much energy because I don't want to listen to anybody sit there snotting and crying, trying to play up being a victim while they lie to me about the details of what really happened. So I wasn't her most sympathetic fan. Let's just say that. Well, I'm not a fan at all, but you guys get what I'm saying. I, I, I definitely, you know, I wasn't hating. I wasn't an op, but I certainly wasn't very sympathetic to her and what she was talking about. So she said on gail king that she didn't have a physical relationship with him and now in her documentary that's come out yesterday you know it's been clipped and it's going viral around the internet that she's admitting and i don't even know why but she's admitting that she did in fact lie and yes yeah, she did but it was probably just once or twice with him on a, a, a drunk night now the thing is is that when you lie about one thing 
it draws the whole thing that you've said into question. It draws everything into question. Because if you lie about one thing, you can possibly lie about other things. So, you know, she seemingly is throwing shade at Gail King for asking her about the nature of their relationship, whether it was physical or not to begin with. I guess she really didn't like that. At least that's certainly the impression that she was given. And I'm not a fan of Gail King. Gail King's one of those feminists. Um, you know, I remember after uh, Kobe Bryant passed, she was doing an interview with Lisa Leslie. And it's like she was trying so hard to get Lisa Leslie to say something disparaging about Kobe. Uh, about Kobe. And uh, bless her heart, man. She she never she never wavered. She said Kobe was like a brother to her. The the person that that woman back in what was it uh colorado like 20 years ago whatever um the person that that woman described is not the person that that she knew and man listen i i like i always like lisa leslie and that just made me like her more the fact that she she refused to get on code she refused to switch up on this guy that she looked at as her brother just to, you know, do the whole sisterhood code. She refused to. So nothing but respect for her for that. She wouldn't do it. But that just that the way she tried to do that, that just really kind of summed up why I really don't like those extreme over the top feminist types, because here the man is no longer here and he's not even um able to defend himself and you still trying to drag him about something that was said about him almost 20 years ago that's been debunked it was debunked then that's why the charges were dropped the chick was not you know you know what kobe is guilty of not paying her that's what kobe is guilty of you know kobe kobe is brilliant of a basketball player he is and i'm a huge kobe fan you know, any, any of y'all that know me, y'all know I'm a, a huge Kobe fan. So this isn't me hating on him. This is just me keeping it a buck. Just because you really like somebody and you might admire their style, their mentality and all that, doesn't mean that you also can't appreciate their flaws. You don't have to defend them like they're perfect. So flaw with Kobe Bryant. As brilliant of a basketball mind as he was, as brilliant of a mind that he was, period. There were some things that he was kind of clueless on. And when it comes to the game, out here trying to be a player and stuff, Kobe was kind of slow on that, all right? He went hooking up with old girl or whatever. If we want to just keep it a buck, the reason why old girl tried to do him the way she did is because Kobe ain't give her nothing. That's all that is. She was up there in his room doing whatever it was that he wanted. And when it was time for her to go, Kobe ain't slide her a few dollars. It just is that simple. Like, you know... If you know, you know. When you at that level, you some rocker, you some rapper, you some pro athlete. When you get to that hotel room, you got a bunch of groupies ready and willing to do whatever it is you want for the night. But it ain't free. I mean, yeah, are they excited to get it in with you because you're Kobe Bryant? Yeah, absolutely. But ultimately, I mean, they still got to eat. They still got rent to pay and all that sort of stuff. So they don't want to keep keep company with some filthy rich dude for hours on end and it's just oh okay i, I just grab my ankles for you and uh, uh let you bend me over the balcony all this stuff for the last few hours i didn't did all types of stuff with you that she probably she probably wouldn't even do for her boyfriend all right she didn't did stuff with kobe that probably her boyfriend ain't even been on the receiving end of and then he gonna boot her out without even throwing her a couple of dollars so i mean that's just in my opinion kind of what that was about and kobe's reputation took a hit that it could never recover from all because he just was kind of like clueless to how that part of the game worked. I really believe from the bottom of my heart, if Kobe understood the way the game worked better, he would have not only had that chick sign some NDA, but he also would have knew to throw her a few dollars to keep her freaking mouth shut. It's like, dang, it's, this really ain't that hard. NDA before you even before before we even do anything before we even start talking and small talk or whatever that NDA is over there right he should have a few of those in his little suitcase 
um, you know, when, when he packing in and packing out for the hotel, he should have a few of them ready to go in his suitcase. Girl comes up, she signs the NDA. You got to have a few dollars on you, bro. I'm sorry. When you on your way in for the night, you got to stop by the ATM and get a few dollars just, just in case, some just in case money. You don't know. You can't be out there, you know, these, these, these 304s, they don't take checks. They don't take credit cards. I mean, this was back then. All right. Now you ain't got to have the cash on you like that because they got cash app and Venmo or whatever. But back then, no, man, it was cash only. And they wasn't taking uh, checks and there wasn't no way to get no, no credit card, the, the whole square thing or whatever. She, she ain't had one of those. So you had to have that cash on hand to go ahead and throw the check. You're not, you're not paying her for the services. You're paying her to leave. So, un, you know, just understand that. But, you know, before I got on that tangent, <laughs> you know, Gail King, this is why I really didn't didn't mess with her, that she was trying so hard to throw Kobe under the bus and he's no longer here to defend himself. And the thing that he was accused of was long since debunked. No, that that just that just was a really low thing to me that said a lot about her character and just how disgusting feminism can be when you have one like her that's like boss level feminists you know they they just they have no chill when it comes to trying to bury a man but and this is something that's probably gonna surprise y'all i'm gonna defend gail king on this and this alone this is probably the only time y'all will ever in my life hear me defend gail king she is a journalist ultimately and the reason why she asked those questions is because that's what the rumor mill was saying. And she knew that that's the type of questions that her viewers were going to want to know the answers to. So why not ask her while she has her here? So while Megan Thee Stallion trying to like, you know, throw shade at her and uh, hold her accountable for asking her these sorts of questions, she only did them because she was doing her job. In this case, it didn't it didn't seem like she was asking the questions to be dirty like she was with kobe she was asking the questions because she knows these are the questions that her viewers they want to know they want the answers to so here we are we got a man that's that's in jail for the next 10 years well he been in there he been in there for a little bit and i think it might be a little less like nine eight and a half something like that but we got a man that's still away from his children his freedoms have been taken away and uh i'm I'm even less convinced today that he is guilty of this than I was before. I already wasn't convinced then. I'm even less so uh, now. The reason why I don't feel sorry for Tori, though, is because this is the sort of stuff that he aligned himself with. When you align yourself with low-down, dirty people, I mean, unfortunately, you're going to find yourself in situations like this. You know, he messing around with her, laying with her, and real talk, Megan just seemed like the type of chick that when she mad at you about something, y'all fall out about something, like she'll lie on you about some, some ill stuff. How many circumstances have we seen where a woman, because you know, the whole believe all women thing really opened the floodgates up for a lot of goofy stuff to happen. So how many times have we seen a guy go down because believe all women? So I don't, I just really don't subscribe to that, man. You know, you can have someone that's like, oh, this happened to me, that happened to me. And they can't give you any details because they were, they, it was such a traumatic experience. They can't remember anything. That, to me, I'm sorry, that's not okay. Because that now gives bad actors the room to make up lies and not really have to substantiate anything. Because you now give them an automatic lie and not be held accountable sort of, you know, card. And that's not cool. But we have this man in there. He probably not going to get out, you know. I mean, I don't know, man. It's just when you lie about certain things, you can possibly lie about other things. And then here's the biggest thing of all of why I always wonder if she ever really was shot in the foot. Anyone that's handled a firearm, anyone that shot a firearm, especially you, you should know the damage that a bullet can do to a foot. And she supposedly got shot in the foot, but then was doing these shows, you know, hopping and skipping about after she just supposedly was shot in the foot. 
signs point to doubtful of that thing happening. Now, I don't know either way. I'm just a guy that knows a little bit about shooting and uh, has had his foot hurt. And uh, I've had injuries to my foot that were far less severe than being shot in it. And I couldn't have hopped and skipped around nearly as well as Meg the Stallion did. But here she had a bullet go through hers and she was just performing at a level that was beyond with some people who haven't taken said injury are even able to do. So that's just something to think about, man. But I'm going to go ahead and leave this here. I appreciate y'all connecting with me, man. Thank y'all for the ride along the 5,000. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. Thumbs up this video. I'll holla at y'all. Peace.